There you go. What do you got there, Anthony? Feels like the right one. So here at Hawks Cave, there's a lot of different kinds of fishing. And then we have this whole other area that draws a lot of people, kind of like a magnet. And Anthony is one of those people that he can do any of this kind of fishing that we have down here. But if you were to ask him, like, what's your favorite and where would you prefer to go today? It's almost always going to be back into the park. Nice job, Damn, dude. dude. Nice, nice job. That was sweet. That might be dinner. Get the net on that one, Anthony. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got you, you I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, Relax. he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. What do you think today? Well, head up to the park or what? Yeah, yeah, Anthony's been fishing up there a good bit. Um, sounds like there's a few snook and redfish and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to fishing with Anthony. Yeah, yeah, he's out there every day, man. Good morning, guys. Hey, Anthony. man, what's up? Not much. What do you got? Shrimp? Got some How shrimp are you, buddy? Doing good. Right on. What's up, brother? Good to see you. How you doing? Where do we want to put these? In the, in the floor? Yep. Cool. Anthony, what have you been doing, man? Uh, we've been fishing the park quite a bit, looking for snook, red, some small tarpon. Um, there's some triple tail to be caught, too, on the way up there. And yeah. The sharks have been pretty ravenous, man. You got to get them fishing quick. Fish them fast, huh? Yeah, fish them <laughs> fast. So even around the islands? It's... Around the islands, yep. Yeah. It's been pretty good fishing some of the little the troughs there. It's, it's been a pretty good bite. Well, let's do it, man. Why don't you lower us down? And, All uh, right. We'll... Let's do this. You got some pinfish, too? I do. We got some pinfish as well. Right on. So here at Hawks K, we've got a couple of guide boats. We've got uh, Brandon Simmons on, on the 26, and we have Anthony Vargas on the 24. And we've done a show with Brandon before, but we've never done a show with Anthony. And it was cool to have him be a part of the show, actually on the camera, because Anthony is almost always our number one choice for camera boat driver. He's very good at camera boat driver. He's been behind the scenes for years. He's been a really, you know, just an incredible guide here at Hawks K. Um, you know, I can't remember how many years it's been, but it's been a lot of years that he's been guiding here and running our, our Saltwater Experience boat. I mean, he's a great fisherman, but no matter how bad the weather is and no matter how slow the fishing is, people come back and they just love to spend the day with him. He's got a great personality. Um, he, he just makes people feel comfortable, whether they're an expert angler or, or a family that's never fished before. They always come back having a great time. So where have you been finding the most fish these days? I've been fishing a lot of Clive and Murray Key. Mm -hmm. It's been really good. Um, and also along the Flamingo shoreline has been a, a pretty good bite as well yep. with a lot of juvenile tarpon mixed in. Sounds good. So let's go see if we can get on them. And who knows, we might find some triple tail on the way. Around this area, there's a lot of different kinds of fishing. You can fish, you know, bonefish permit tarpon kind of right around here in the clear water. You can go offshore, you can be in the inshore. And then we have this whole other area that draws a lot of people, kind of like a magnet. And Anthony is one of those people that he can do any of this kind of fishing that we have down here. But if you were to ask him, like, what's your favorite and where would you prefer to go today? It's almost always going to be back into the park. Here at the uh, Hawks Cave Marina, it's an easy run right into Everglades. National Park and when you get up there of course that's the best area that we have uh, and maybe one of the best areas in the world for redfish, snook, trout, tarpon, sharks and Anthony gets in there and he knows those little islands and all those channels and everything as well as anybody. So we're gonna start with the pinfish kind of the jig head whatever rig Rich throws and we're just gonna kind of work down these mangroves first Anthony? Yep, that's, that's the plan. Okay is there anything else we could catch up there besides snook or? Yep, snook. You get little goliath groupers nice. and we'll keep our eyes peeled see if we see any juvenile tarpon rolling around. Okay so the basic Everglades rig works for about everything you up want, here. You want 30 pound on everything or do you want any heavier leader on anything? Typically start with 30 and then uh, if I get chafed off, broken off, then I'll step it up to 40. Okay. You know, 
know, just, just it's always a win-win, right? When you go back there, the fishing's good um, and then the scenery's even better. Uh, we pull up to this first island and you know, you can tell when we get to the kind of the, the most productive zone because the water just gets dirtier and it's really just nutrient rich with, uh, you know, mullet muds and just all kinds of nutrients in the water. And that seems to be where, you know, all these snook and redfish and sharks and just everything live. You know, you can see down the island, there's, there's just little kind of nooks and crannies, um, but you find these points where the water just kind of eddies around that point, And that's just a strategic zone for the fish to, to ambush stuff. There he is. That was a big fish. I'm going with a pinfish. Oh, oh yeah, going nice with a one. Pinfish. Nice one. Oh yeah, grab that net, Anthony. Wow. Good thump. Oh man. That is cool, man. Got him. Right where you said he'd be. Let's see. I'll bring him on this right side. That's a good one, huh? Do I gotta worry about the sharks here, you think? Uh, maybe not so much here. Okay. I haven't seen many this in this area. Good. I won't get to enjoy freak them a little out. bit. I won't freak out then. You had me all scared about having to. Oh, there he goes, oh, and I man. pulled the hook on him. <laughs> That's all right. We that got the cool. best of them. We were gonna let him go anyway. Nice work. <laughs> That's cool. First fish. Action brings action. There you go. Yeah. Hello. Hello. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hawks K. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. Waypoint, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Daiwa, Marathon, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Salt's Gone, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. The trick with a, being a, a good fishing guide is to first of all, have lots of options, but then be able to the most efficiently and effectively figure out which one is best for the conditions that we have today. And, you know, we, we had a little wind that day and it wasn't necessarily the most favorable wind. So that shuts off a lot of different options. Anthony goes with a game plan. When he, when he showed up in the morning, boy, he knew exactly where he wanted to go down to the dead tree that we were going to yep. fish under. He's like, we're going to go to this spot. The tide's going to be doing this. We're going to fish right under this, this one little corner and there's a dead tree right there. And I've been catching a lot of fish under that. There was a checklist that he had kind of come up with this little route that we were going to run based upon the conditions, based upon the tide, based upon the bait that we have, based upon what we wanted to catch. And he came with a game plan, very well prepared. It was, it was cool to see that with Anthony. Well, that was the slowest bite ever. Got the right one? I don't know. Big fish. Might be a red. Get this net. That was the slowest big, bite big ever. Snook. Red. Red, wow, big red. Nice. Wow, get him before a shark does. Wow. Listen to him sucking that pinfish that down. That is cool. How about that? Oh, Anthony. There we go. I pulled him away from you. Nice. The last second, it was like the trick. The was trick that on a pinfish? Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, nice. that's awesome. big old pinfish. You know, there's several kind of classic Everglades rigs. There's going to be kind of the knocker rig, or you got, a, you know, your bait or your your hook, and then you've got to wait up the line. I will go to the jig head, just a straight leader down to a jig head, put the bait on the jig head, and the, one of the reasons why I like that so much better than the other one is because maybe it's my casting style, maybe it's whatever, but I know we're going to have to get it in close to the bushes. It's straight in there. I could feather the line and put it next to the trees. That's one of the reasons why I like the jig head. I also like the jig head because I know exactly where the bait is. The bait is going to go to the bottom. If I want to raise it up off the bottom, I can. And then if I relax, it's going straight to the bottom where with the other rig, the bait could be swimming around anywhere. And I don't know, I don't know where it is. So I just don't feel as confident with that rig. Anthony, uh, he was like, you can fish a jig head or you can fish this rig, either one. So I went straight to the jig head. Let's just let him go like this. Come here, Phil. You just go ahead and go away like that. Right there. 
I don't want to stick my hand too far in that water. No, mean today. No, sir. It's mean water today. All right. All right. Good old redfish. One of the things I've learned fishing with you and Anthony and a lot of other people that go up there is that the fish aren't always tucked up under the bushes. In fact, there can be way better fishing between the boat and the mangroves. And a lot of people, including myself, one of the things that I want to do is I want to get up in there close so I can see under the bushes or I can make sure I'm getting a good cast in there. But a lot of people that fish up there, yourself included, you hang the way back it's because 30 feet off of the bushes, there can be a little trough there. And that's where that can be where all the fish are on that particular tide. There you go. What do you got there, Anthony? Feels like the right one. Better get the net for you. Oh, come on. Fighting like a... Kind of feels like a red. Redfish or jack or something, huh? Oh, nice red. That is a good one, man. Was that on the pinfish, too? On the pinfish? Jig head or no jig head? No jig head. That Free surprises line. me. Redfish came up and ate it, huh? Yep. You know, Anthony had this other spot in mind. That's why he'd been fishing um, a little closer to Cape Sable there. And there's just kind of these, these old trees, a lot of them, uh, you know, kind of dead mangroves that, that were probably left over from Hurricane Irma. And it really made a great structure for the snook and redfish to hang in. And sure enough, with that pinfish, he had so much confidence with these pinfish. And he was fishing them without the jig head. He was just fishing just a, just mm -hmm. a plain hook, just yep. a circle hook, no weight, and flipped it up there. And uh, you know, he's waiting, waiting. He comes tight, bigger fish. But sure enough, it was another nice redfish. Yeah. Before he knew that thing was in there. Well, he called it, man. Right on this point. Hey, it's a long one. Nice. <laughs> nice. Good job, yeah. Anthony. A couple spots on that Good guy. Good job, brother. Heck yeah. Kind of amazing to me, one, that that redfish ate the big pinfish, and two, that it, that it must have come up off the bottom to eat it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, that kind of, that was educational. I'll tell you what, I got to get those traps and, and do it. So. I just always go catch pilchards and then but there's such a pain and you're like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot easier. Quick, quick and easy. Especially when you got customers and you don't want to waste time catching bait with them. That is great. That's a good one. Nice and sandy, being in the sand. It is yeah, crazy how they the change color. this water. Yep. Pretty one, grunting away. And you like the redfish or the snook better? Uh, I don't know. This one kind of might have me on the fence here a little bit. I was <laughs> going to say snook, but this one definitely gave me a run for my money. Way to go. about the Everglades is there's such a variety. You know, the snook, redfish, tarpon, those are kind of the ones that everybody talks about. Um, but there are so many other things. We got uh, mangrove snappers, there's trout, there's a um, goliath grouper, triple tail. Um, really, you never know what you're gonna catch. And um, we pulled up to one of other Anthony's spots and this spot was a little different. The water was a little clear. We saw snook there, but he was going there specifically for goliath grouper. He knew that th this was a good spot for them. We even put on a little heavier rods, a little heavier leader. You went with your favorite jig head, you know, and I, and I followed suit. You know, you've shown it a few times, especially with those goliaths and those pinfish. If you're wanting to get it down to the bottom, which is where a goliath grouper lives and eats, he's not necessarily a surface eater or even a midwater heater. So I put that jig head on and, and flipped it in there. And, you know, there's this little spot where the current just kind of creeped around, you know, and it just looks like one of those spots where they'd, they'd be laying in there. And, and sure enough, I felt that big thump. There he is. Got him. That's a good fight, Anthony. Yeah, there you go. I think that is. Oh, I don't know. Well, that might be a big grouper. A little Goliath there. Sweet. Little, little big guy. There he is. Look at him. And man, it has all the effort you can get to get him out of those the, those roots and stuff because it you know it's a it's just a tangled mess under there. And if they get you back there and wrap around those roots, you're not getting them out. Um, but it was cool. And and those goliaths are just you know a beautiful animal. That that's just a baby. That, that fish gets to be. 500 pounds, but fun to catch those juveniles around the, the mangroves there. Yep, just one more thing that the Everglades offers. This pinfish, dude, a little bit of everything eats those. Redfish, yep. snook, that is cool. It's great to see these guys coming back. You ca catching a lot of them these days, Anthony? Yep, from that size up to about wow. 30 pounds. That is cool. That's good work. Sweet. All right. So that's a uh, 
You catch them like two, three times that size? Yep. Nice. Well, that's a fun thing to do, man. They pull hard, man. Well, you know, when you're sitting here trying to catch these snooks, sometimes the snook are smart and hard to catch, and um, the glass, it's a, just another element, you know? Yeah, he's I ready love those to rock fish. and roll. I like the there glass. Goes. Sweet. I think they're fun. Well, that was a good call. Right. Nice, dude. Nice work, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see if we can snag another. We get questions all the time, and one of the most often asked questions is, what is the ultimate setup for your Florida Keys fishing? And I really don't have one ultimate setup, but I could narrow it down to two rods that I use primarily for almost all of our inshore fishing. And if I were to go with the ultimate, I would definitely pick the St. Croix Legend Inshore Extreme. This rod is fantastic. I mean, it it is the best feeling rod. It takes 32 pairs of hands to make this rod in the United States of America. Extreme craftsmanship goes into this and the actions are perfect for what we do. Now, the question comes in, how do I pair a reel to each of these rods? And in my hand right here, I've got, both of these rods are seven feet. That's the rod length that I like. Now, some of this is gonna be personal preference, but I prefer a seven foot rod and I like the 10 to 20 pound rod and the eight to 17 pound rod. And if I were to pick just two rods that I were gonna fish all my inshore species with, it would be these two, the seven foot 10 to 20, seven foot eight to 17. Now, when you go to pair a reel with these rods, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start thinking about what species am I gonna catch on these rods and that's how I'm gonna select the reel. Now for, let's, let's start with the light one. With the light reel, I'm gonna go with an eight to 17, and this is gonna be primarily for bonefish, redfish, and permit, and small tarpon. All of those fish, with the exception of the permit, the permit's gonna run the furthest. But if I can get um, 250 yards of braid on this reel, that's gonna be enough. And with the advent of better lines, smaller diameters, the spool technology has gotten a lot better, and the drag technology has gotten a lot better, which has enabled all of the manufacturers, including Daiwa here, to make smaller, more compact reels. A smaller, more compact reel is gonna allow me to make more accurate casts instead of having some big clunky thing right here. This looks like what you would fish crappie with a few years ago, and now you can handle a 30-pound tournament or a 50-pound tarpon, and any bonefish in the ocean, this reel can handle that, as long as you have enough line capacity. So using the Daiwa J braid, I can put 10-pound braid on here, and I can get over 250 yards of 10 pound line on here. That is gonna be a great setup for this rod. As I step up to a larger one for either bigger permit or larger tarpon, the 10 to 20 pound rod is gonna be the one that I choose. And I'm gonna go again with the species that I'm gonna choose and determine how much line I'm gonna need as to find the best reel. Now the reels on both of these are the Daiwa BGMQ. This is the 4000 series and there's a 2500 series on the smaller rod. The 4000 series will allow me to put heavier line, 20 pound line, and get over 300 yards of line on this BGMQ 4000. That is gonna be big enough for any tarpon that I catch, for any permit that I catch, and it's going to be small and lightweight, which is gonna allow me to make a good, accurate cast to any of these species. So if you have more questions, you can always find us at saltwaterexperience.com. There's plenty of places to ask a question, just like this one. What's the ultimate rod and reel setup? And I've gotta say, it's a St. Croix Legend Inshore Extreme. With a Daiwa BGMQ reel, you're not gonna go wrong. Pair the size up, put the right line on it, and you're ready to go. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Yeti, and by Burnowin Rod Holders, Wiley X, 
Nikon. Buff. Lithium Pros. And Golden Boat Lifts. Did you know you can get every episode of Saltwater Experience completely free on Waypoint TV? Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can download the app or find it on any smart TV. And if that's not enough, you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you find podcasts. And we'd love to have you as a follower on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. With the conditions that we had, I thought we were chipping away at a pretty good day at this point. Yeah, it was. And then, you know, as we started looking at the sky and we could see it, you know, especially off to the east there was, was um, there was some rain coming. It looked like big, nasty rain clouds were coming. Kind of checked the radar and you could see, well, it's coming. And we're looking at the sky and it was perfectly sunny, but it, you could see that those clouds were coming. And the other thing that he'd been doing up there is catching these triple tail. Um, it's been incredible triple tail fishing yeah. in the last few years. And so he's like, you know, if we're going to do it, it's now or never. And so we took a little rod, um, just hopped up in the tower, you know, I'm up there with Anthony and we're just driving along, um, looking, you know, we saw one or here or there, but there was a certain zone where he knew they'd, they'd been. And when we got to that zone, it was just, whoosh, we pulled off and there was three of them together. I mean, like, like on top of each other, it was, it was game on. There he is right there. That is a big one there. Ooh, easy. He's, he's turned. Nope. Nice job, him, dude. dude. Nice, nice job. That was sweet. That might be dinner. Get the net on Could that be. one, Anthony. I went back to the lure because that's uh, a good call. They were pulling that shrimp off too easily. I think there's one right behind him, Anthony. Yeah, those triple tail have been really uh, a great target. They're great to eat. They're a, a great target because a lot of people can see them. Sometimes in that cloudy water, they show up like this coffee cup. I mean, they're as black as this coffee cup. Other times, they kind of show up more, more blonde. And that's what that was happening on this day, is that they were mixing kind of in with the water coloration, yeah. way different. They, we only saw a couple that showed up really, really dark. And a lot of the other ones were, were not hard to see, but just different than Harder. what we had seen before. It, but the trick with a triple tail is that you actually have to get it there. And there's usually wind, and it's a very small target because the triple tail is laying on its side. He has a very small eye. I don't believe that they have very good vision with that tiny little eye that they have. And they're laying on their side. So one eye is looking down, one eye is looking up. I don't know that they can see that well. And so the idea is that you get it right in front of them. Maybe they can smell right well. Right in front of them. Yeah, it's pretty much right in front of them. So there was a situation to where we saw a, a, a big one, the biggest one that we saw all day and I went straight for an artificial lure because I thought, okay, this is heavier. The fish that we've seen today have eaten well, they've behaved well, they've, they've been pretty aggressive. So I'm gonna go with this artificial lure. I knew that Anthony was there to back me up with a, with a live shrimp if he didn't eat it, but I just felt more confident to make a longer cast accurately with something that had a little bit more weight. That one is not a uh, crappie. Ah! <laughs> you got a hole in the net or what? <laughs> I guess. I thought you had that one. I know. This one does not look like a crappie. It looks more like a flounder. About the size of the ones that you like to eat. This one will definitely make the stick. It was a great cast and what, 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 you know, we knew that one was dinner. I mean, those are one of the best eating fish there. We caught a whole bunch of uh, smaller ones that were fun to catch, but just, you know, weren't big enough to, to be legal to, 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 to keep. And, uh, but yours, man, there was no doubt that was a, that was a good one. And uh, we got him in the boat, got him in the net, and uh, you know um, they raised that slot a few years ago, and it's really helped the fishery. I mean, it has exploded. It's, they went from 15 to 18, and um, you know they obviously have let him get to, to breeding size because there is a ton of fish around. And uh, we put him down there, and sure enough, he well exceeded the, the 18 limit, um, and uh, we knew we had good dinner. Yeah. Easy. Easy money. Easy peasy. Dinner. With a little lemon squeezy. Which cooler do you want him in? Put him in there. Big one, I guess. Got a nice little slurry going on in there. All right. Right on. Good job. Nice work. Right on. Let's get another one. I'll tell you what, we do need to be watching that deal right there. Every time we get on these triple tail like this, the, the storm comes in. Maybe we try to catch one more and then run for the run for the hills. 
You have a lot of heat rising up off the mainland of Florida, and you get those afternoon thunderstorms up there pretty often, and it's not uncommon to get run out of Flamingo from a storm. And this, you know, the last time we were up there triple tail fishing in exactly the same area, we got run off by a storm. It goes from kind of a, a light sheet of rain, and it gets darker and darker. You see some lightning popping in there, and it's like, boys, it's time to go home. Good call on the triple tail, Anthony. Yeah, man, they were, they're out here and they're chewing. Boy, you can feel it. Feel that wind picking Ooh, up? I mean, yeah. it, in the last two minutes, here it comes. All right. I know I brought a rain jacket. You guys all set. I'll Back to the barn. I'll we start running back. back.